Okay, <laughs> it's a bit of chock a block, a bit hard to work. It is night time and it is quite dark. I'm trying to save some time and get some testing done before I start putting the ceiling jeep rocks on. You can see behind me uh, the thing arrived already, the lifter, the jeep rock lifter has arrived and I assembled it. As you can see, um, I put some photos so you can actually see how um, I assembled it. It wasn't that hard, it took me about 15-20 minutes and I had the thing assembled. So um, yeah, so it's all ready for this weekend to start putting the ceiling jeep rocks on, the first layer of it. So, but I thought before I actually do that, I actually do some testing with the second layer of insulation put in to see and compare if there is any difference. I'm sure there'll be some difference, so we'll, we'll find that out. I have the thing set up. Um, I'm using my mobile phone to uh, give some light to my face, otherwise all you will see me <laughs> is a shadow, a silhouette. So um, that's why I'm using my mobile phone to actually um, get my face in the, f in the video. As you can see over there I've got the same speaker in the same position set up as my last test and I have my microphone stand ready for the microphone uh, to go in there, the ECM 8000 from Behringer, which is um, a reference uh, microphone. I've got my Yamaha AG03 and my laptop, which I'm going to be running the uh, Room EQ Wizard again, just to see what uh, the room actually sounds like now, especially now that I have a door. Even though it's not fully closed, because I can't close it, there's not enough gap for the electricity wire to go through, but there's about, um, you know, uh, maybe um, I don't know, half a centimeter or something like that, or maybe a centimeter gap at the door, but that shouldn't affect it anyway. So um, here we go. So I'm just going to set up the test and run it, and we'll look at the graphs and see how it will actually turn up, and we'll compare it to see if there's any difference. Here we go. Okay, so what I have done there, I know you can't see me, I'm just a silhouette. What I've done there is basically make sure that it's in the same position as it was before, right in the middle between those two walls, halfway between the two walls there, and then the same distance apart. The speaker is about half a meter, exactly half a meter away from the back wall, and, and the microphone is one and a half meters away from the speaker. So uh, here we go. going to run room EQ wizard. Generate the noise again, the, the pink noise, making sure that um, we've got the, the correct level. I'm going to use my SPL meter. Okay, basically what I've done is I made sure that uh, the volume coming out of the speaker is at 75 dB SPL. 
So that gives us the reference point. So let's do some adjustment. Okay, we are now ready to measure. Sorry, you cannot see my face, but that's okay. I'm going to check the levels. All good. Let's start measuring. Okay, we have our first measurement for 10th of May 2017. One third Looking at the one-third graph smoothing, it doesn't look that bad actually. It doesn't look that bad. 75. So I'll put this on the screen so you can actually see the screen captures what it looks like. So again, we have a, sort of a peak about 160 hertz, about uh, up to 82, so which is about about 7 dB peak not bad and then we have another one about six kilohertz or about seven kilohertz or so again giving us about 6 db peak and as to dips there's not many there's a dip at uh, four kilohertz down about um, three db which is very very acceptable so you're not going to call that a dip so we only have two peaks that we need to worry about. Let's have a look at the waterfall. Again, waterfall looks really, really great and fantastic uh, throughout most of the frequencies. So um, this is a pretty good result. Going down at 10K, it's only taking about 120 milliseconds uh, uh, fading. So that's, that's really good. So that means there's hardly any at upper frequencies which are being absorbed by the insulation and at lower frequencies it actually starts about I'll say if we go down to I'll say anywhere 400 Hertz and below so it's taking a little bit longer and up to 300 milliseconds to decay uh, which is fine so all of that will be taken care of by I guess my base traps and internal acoustic treatment and the panels that I got to put in there. So this is good. This is good. Well, there we go. Another day and another test. And I'm actually quite happy with the result. Later on, I will compare the previous testing graph uh, to the today's one and see if uh, actually having the second insulation here made any acoustical change. Um, I don't foresee any major changes, but um, there might be a little bit here and there slight changes but other than that I do expect the graph to be about the same and you know about as always been from day one about 160 kilo, uh, 160 Hertz is what I need to worry about uh, once I've got this place uh, finished and that's the sound I need to make sure that doesn't leave the room because that's the sound that is the most powerful um, in the room so and that's quite low frequency as well you know you're looking about you know um, 160 Hertz that's about twice the frequency of the kick drum or the bass guitar the upper frequencies of the bass guitar so you don't want those sounds going out um, you know that's probably the major thing would be uh, for me so uh, hopefully uh, one day I'll have this thing set up here as well just waiting for that moment when a a uh, low flying plane, jet plane or something like that will actually fly by and I'll be able to capture it and see um, and, and look at the graph what frequency the plane will be generating and um, try to see if that anything I can do to minimize that if that noise comes in here but it, that will be something that um, I might do after I put the first uh, layer of gyprock in um, and test it out, maybe the second layer, or I don't know. Whenever I get the chance, that means I'll be able to test any outside noise um, coming in. So, you know, loud noise such as planes anyway. Catch you later.
Let's have a quick look what the graphs look like since December. I've done three measurements uh, since. Uh, then this is the graph we're looking at in December. And then next I did February. So that's what the graph changed. And then I did another one just recently, as you've seen, in May. So those are the differences. Now I have to mention, this is not a reference graph, but more like a comparison graph. Because the speaker that I used for all three testings is really cheap, crappy, 8-inch speaker. It has different responses. Obviously, it doesn't go all the way down. It might have some um, you know, peaks and dips. But the whole thing is I'm using the same speaker, so it's a comparison. Because when I actually put my Personas Aris E8 there, the graph will certainly look different because they're more suited for the studio production. Now that that's clear out of the way, the graph is just comparison. So as you can see, from December to February, when I put the first layer of insulation, as you can see, the peak sort of moved from about here, about 120 hertz, to about 182 hertz. And then this dip here, which was in the first go, at about 3.4K is actually leveled up. Now that actually moved up to 5.5 kilohertz. So this moved up there and the rest is pretty much the same. Now adding the second layer of the insulation. Now most of the bass have gone, which is a good sign. That means all of the lower frequencies are being taken care of and it's quite flat around all the way. There's not much big dip as such, apart from the fact that uh, we've got a little bit of, you know, a uh, peak here at about 7k. But other than that, you know, they're pretty much the same. So that's one graph we're looking at, the frequency range. Now another important and really informative uh, graph is the impulse. It's how quickly the sound is dissipating. So we'll have a look how quickly the audio is being decayed. Let's just remove those. Let's have a look. This is the December one. As you can see, the audio come in, and this is how long it took for um, the sound to go down. So if we average this out so we can sort of about there. So the audio is sort of dying at about 400 millisecond or so. That's with no insulation. And when in February I had the first layer of insulation, we can see a drastic change already. So this audio as is down from 400 milliseconds to, I can quite safely say, about there I think is would be an average, to about 200 milliseconds. So adding just one layer of insulation, the reverberation in the room actually dropped by half, down to 200 milliseconds. And then by adding the second layer of insulation in May, as you've seen, if we have a look, just looking at the average across there, and where it's actually dying, i say it'd be about, about here. Just let's be generous and say about it, even though I would say here. So about... 114 milliseconds. So that's halved again. So by adding the two layers of insulation, we drop down the reverberation from 400 milliseconds down to 114 or 100 milliseconds or thereabouts, you know, if we really want to be thing. So that's a really great news. This is very an informative uh, graph that we can actually see and compare the purple one before any insulation the yellow one, first layer of insulation, and the red one, the second layer of insulation. Okay, here's something to think about when you are actually installing the vent um, up onto the ceiling. This is my drywall or plasterboard that's going to go onto the ceiling. This is the first layer. And I've already cut a hole where the vent is going to be. Now, you might find that all of these... Um, vents 
the plastic vents that will go up, the clips are designed to go on and clip onto the plasterboard at a thickness of about 16 millimeter the max, you know, anywhere between 10 to 16 millimeter. What happens is the spring gets loaded and this thing is basically clips on and the plastic bit gets really nice and tight with the um, with the board. But since I'm gonna have two layers of them, that means it's gonna be, um, you know, 32 millimeter thick. So there's no way these clips gonna be um, clipping on. So what I have to do is make a space for these clips. So as you can see, I marked the spots and that's the reason why I actually cut it in the first place um, on the first layer of it so that I'm gonna cut these bits off so that when the vent is uh, installed on the second layer which is going to be at the bottom um, of it there'll be room for these clips to come in and clip onto the next layer down this way so if you're looking down from a ceiling let's assume you're looking down from the ceiling even though at the moment they're just sitting horizontally when you're moving down from the ceiling these clips will be at the next layer down so something to think about because um, you might end up having some issues when you put two layers, especially if they are thick layers of um, plasterboard and your vents won't be clicking in. Unless you find one, then it, will, then it might do. But I found that these are the best ones to get because I can actually even turn the vents on and off, the, the air. But um, the clips that will clip need to have the space at the top layer so they can clip at the bottom layer. Hope that makes sense.